I have designed these two SBMS and added it to my custom controller PCB so that I can manage the two S battery pack inside. And today I'm going to show you how you can make it yourself. This is the same PCB that is already inside the controller connected to the two batteries. As you can see, it's connected by these one, two, three wires, the plus, the middle one, and the minus. And if I turn on the controller, you can see the red light coming on, meaning that it's letting the power from the batteries to the whole PCB. All right, so this is the BMS. And if you already know how it's working, feel free to skip to the design part. Now let's get to the explaining. Alright, so imagine that you have just one battery and you connect it to load, for example, a DC motor. Yeah, pretty simple. But here comes a problem your way. So this is a lithium-ion battery and if you continue to discharge it under the safe voltage of 2.5 volts, it can get damaged and it can, I mean, explode and uh, heat up and it can completely stop functioning so what you want to do is to protect it and you can protect it in a way that you will measure the vol voltage of the battery like so and right now as you can see it's totally fine at 3.65 volts but if it gets below 2.5 volts you want to disconnect the load protecting your battery and the same goes for over voltage and that's when you are charging the battery, it's safe to charge it to run 4.2 volts. But if you go above those 4.2 volts, again, the battery can ignite itself and the, or in better case, it just stops working. And we can again solve this problem by measuring the voltage and if it becomes more than 4.2 volts, we can disconnect the charger. And then we add a bunch of other stuff and practically we have a simple BMS, a battery management system. And you think this is all, but here comes another surprise. What happens if you add two batteries in series because maybe you want to drive a bigger load that, for example, this motor requires way higher voltage than this one, so we need a bunch of, other ba a bunch of more batteries in series to create higher voltage. And again, we can power the motor like so. Yeah, okay, so this higher voltage allows us to drive away bigger loads. But here comes the problem. You see, as you have these two batteries in series and the charger is going like this is the plus, this is the minus of the whole battery system. But what can happen is that this cell can differ by voltage a bit from this one. So, for example, let's say that this is 3.65 volts and this is 3.55 volts. So, 0.1 volts of a difference. And I think that this is not a big deal, but actually, over time, it can damage the whole battery pack. And the BMS can solve this problem by a feature called cell balancing. And then the BMS also provides like overcurrent protection, like this one has 20 amps. Alright, so that's pretty much all, let's get to the designing. And my BMS schematic is hugely inspired by this BMS, so shout out to the creator of this PCB. Alright, so this is the BMS schematic and personally I'm using KiCad, but you can use whichever PCB editor you want to use. And I've divided the BMS into the first part and the second part. Basically the second part is the balancing one and the first part is the controlling part. You can already see here the main chip, um, by the way I'm gonna post all of the uh, schematics of uh, the chips these one two three chips well basically these ones are the same and the one two mosfets uh, in the description so you can check it out or you can uh, 
uh, find them yourself by uh, just typing this name, the, uh, the name of the component. Anyway, how this chip is connected, it's pretty simple. The VDD is connected for a 100 ohm resistor to the uh, plus of the BMS. Then the VSS is connected to the minus of the cell. And then VC is connected again for a 100 ohm resistor to the middle cell, you know, like the plus of the first cell and the minus of the second cell. And VC is also connected for a 100 nanofarad ceramic SMD capacitor to the cell minus. Then CS is connected for a 1 kilo ohm resistor to BMS minus. And in this schematic, BMS minus and BMS plus represent the output pins of the whole BMS, you know? Whereas the cell 0V is connected directly to the negative pole of the first cell. Alright, and then OD and OC, basically both of them control these 1, 2, 3, 4 MOSFETs. Uh, here these are in parallel and these two are also connected in parallel. And if I think about it now, I could have gotten just with one MOSFET, because I, I mean one MOSFET is good for about 4 a or 5 A amps and I, I will just need one of them, but basically if you need more amps to get out of the BMS, you can just stack them up in parallel. And it works like this, the OD controls one set of MOSFETs and the OC controls the other set. Once both of them are open, so when both of them are conducting electricity, BMS- minus and cell 0V connect, making the BMS deliver power. And here you can just see that the BMS minus, so this one, BMS, uh, the uh, output pin of the BMS is connected to the ground of the PCB. And then you can see that the BMS plus is directly connected to the positive terminal of the second cell. This beautiful PCB and this one as well have been provided by the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. They are a manufacturing company producing PCBs, PCB assembly and 3D printing. And the ordering process is quite easy. Once you finish your PCB, you can head over to PCBWay.com and you can order the PCB. That's all. And after a couple of weeks, you receive the PCBs in your mail. And today I wanted to share with you how these PCBs are made. First of all, they create this outline. As you can see, it's exactly the same as the PCB, except it's missing all of those components. Because firstly, this is made, then they outsource the components from multiple resellers like or suppliers like Moser, DigiKey or any other. If I find some video of how it's made, I mean it's quite interesting, I will put it down in the description so you can check it out. And once the assembly is finished, they will pack it in inside of the bubble foil so nothing gets damaged. Pretty cool. Well, I received it in about one week after the assembly was finished, so pretty fast. So thanks again PCBWay for providing me these beautiful PCBs. Now let's get back to the design. You can go to the second part of the BMS and again you can find data sheets of this chip and this MOSFET down in the description. And this chip has 6 pins but 3 of them are without any connection. And then we have VDD or power source for the chip that's uh, connected through a 100 ohm resistor to the positive terminal of the first cell. Then the VSS, the minus, is connected to the negative terminal of the first cell. And then VDD is connected for a 100 nanofarad capacitor to negative terminal of the first cell. And then the output is directly controlling the N-type MOSFET, which is connected to the minus of the first cell, and for a 43 ohm resistor to the plus of the first cell. And this setup is basically used for the cell balancing. And the same setup goes for the second cell. As you can see, this is the negative of the second cell, positive, again negative, negative, uh, and positive. So it's basically the same, but with just with the second cell, and this one is the first cell. And if you have a hard time finding, for example, this MOSFET, I mean, you can just pick whichever 
MOSFET you can find, but make sure that the parameters are pretty close and the same goes for these MOSFETs. And then I also have here a 100 kilo ohm resistor that's connected from the negative of the first cell to the BMS minus. I mean, I have no idea why it's there, I couldn't find it anywhere except on the BMS PCB that I showed you earlier, so I just put it there, because I mean, I don't know if it's supposed to be there or if it has some function, not quite sure. And I mean, it's quite simple design, but it works and I'm happy with it, but if you have any suggestions or questions, don't mind asking them down in the comments, because I mean, I'm also I'm always trying to improve my designs and also I'm, I'm here to help you guys. And just to let you know, this is the datasheet of the first chip, so this one. And we can, I mean, you can scroll th through this and find the bunch of, for example, these absolute maximum ratings, so that's pretty important. And there also, yeah, here it is, yeah, yeah, here it is, a uh, simple design, and you can see that it's pretty similar to ours. And this is the datasheet of the second chip, and as you can see, they are even using it with a 5S battery. So you, uh, you can stack it up, and then you can see that it's connected the same way as we have in our datasheet, so everything should be alright. And this is the datasheet of the big MOSFET, so uh, this one that's connecting the BMS- minus to the negative terminal of the first cell. And you can just see a bunch of parameters here. If and again, if you can't find this chip or, or this MOSFET, you can find pretty similar ones. It's not going to be a problem at all. And again, we have uh, here the second MOSFET that's used for the balance charging right here. And again, if you find a MOSFET that's pretty similar to this one, it's not going to be a problem at all. And the BMS is connected like so. So here's the battery plus. It goes right here. Here is the middle or 4.2 volts. So that's basically between the batteries. It goes right here. And the minus of the battery pack is here and it goes right up here. There are some of the balancing stuff right here and also the uh, over voltage protection and all of that stuff it's managed by some of the IC in here and these one two three four big MOSFETs basically I would need just two of them because I don't need that much current anyway once the BMS is operational and it is within the safe range of the batteries the ground of the PCB gets connected to the ground of the BMS. But as I want to have some kind of a manual control, I've added this switch, as you can see. This switch. I can switch between the charging state and the on state of the piece, uh, other PCB. How it works is that the plus, the, the plus of the BMS goes right to the switch and I can switch it and I can connect it e either to the uh, charging circuitry or to the voltage regulator which goes down from the 2S battery so that's like 7 point... what is it? 7.2... yeah yeah exactly 7.2 volts to 5 volts so it can power this chip and the joysticks and other ICs as well and that's basically how it works, that's how it's connected. Stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe because I will be either explaining the charging circuitry or the voltage regulator, so stay tuned, don't forget to subscribe and if you like this video don't forget to like it as well and bye bye!